My Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and we desire to receive you in our souls. Since our brothers and sisters cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into their hearts. They embrace you as if, as if you were already there and unite themselves wholly to you. Never permit them to be separated from you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brethren, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him, and all the ages, to him be glory, through every age forever. Amen. Amen. by his holy and his glorious wounds may Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad 
knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the Eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These, then, are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sin. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. Our birth would have been no gain had we not been redeemed. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. O oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know the time and hour when Christ rose from the underworld. This is the night of which it was written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of gladness. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners, drives out hatred, fosters concord, 
and brings down the mighty. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar, which glowing fire ignites for God's honor. A fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light. For it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who, coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome and separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth 
that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed time, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant over all the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and had found it very good. Evening came and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day God finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. You are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You fixed the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean, as with a garment, you covered it. 
above the mountains the waters stood. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the You send forth springs into the watercourses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You water the mountains from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites might pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also leaving the front took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back on the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. 
So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is glorious, triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The flood waters covered them, they sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seed, O Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remained undimmed in splendor, even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came upon the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds, proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievements. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal life, 
look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that, renewed in mind and body, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out all the old yeast, that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are leavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 
you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew after the Sabbath as the first day of the week was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven approached rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on, the way, on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading in what newspaper, I don't remember, an editorial, an op-ed piece by a, a woman, a mother, who had uh, declared, in a way, at the beginning of this COVID virus when all the schools had closed and different school administrations were trying to figure out what to do to help their children in the way of continuing their education, that she was going to take a time out with her children, that rather than go to school online, rather than do all this homework, 
she was going to have her children play and play video games and watch movies and read books and do all the kinds of things that I guess you might say um, they would do on vacation. Well, of course, I suppose that she had her own reasons. I am sure that there are many who would be horrified by that idea, um, especially now that the schools are not planning, many schools are not planning to continue through the, until through the summer and, um, and not return until the fall, we hope and we pray. But she's obviously knows her children and has figured out what is most important to them uh, in these very different times that we are experiencing. And she's taken note of that. This is different. This is altogether different. And this requires, I guess, a different response. I can't help wondering if maybe that's what we're invited to do each and every time we celebrate Easter, the resurrection of the Lord, the rising to new life of Jesus Christ who was most certainly crucified, most certainly dead. And I suppose it was the experience of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and the apostles Peter and John, who first saw the empty tomb, and all the other apostles who saw him in the upper room later when he appeared to them, and then the disciples, and finally Paul. There, there was something different here. When Jesus rose from the dead, this was altogether new. You know, uh, it's popular to re refer to things as, as a new normal, but this is in no way normal and will never ever be normal, but if we call it normal, then that means that things are extraordinary now. And that's what the resurrection is. It's unfortunate that we can't celebrate that as we normally do, but maybe, just maybe, in our hearts, we will find that desire to experience the resurrection once again in our lives and through the spiritual communion that we asked for before this celebration of the Mass, uh, to give us a new sense of this, what life is for us, that there really is something new, that, uh, that these difficult times, these maybe even desperate times, call for faith. And faith in what? Well, not just solely faith in God. We have faith in God because we have faith in the resurrection. You know, in this, as I said, these difficult times, maybe desperate times, I know there are a number of people who have suffered from the COVID virus here in the parish. We've lost a, a couple of people, sadly, and, and we mourn with them that there's an infallible principle of faith that whenever things are dark, whenever things uh, uh, seem desperate or, or, or impossible, uh, whenever sadness is great in our hearts, God always reaches out some way, always looks to connect with us, and always to connect to us with that, that simple fact of our faith, which is that he has raised his son from the dead. And it's that fact of our lives, it's that new normal, so to speak, that maybe, just maybe, when we get through this and we all gather again together uh, to worship one another with him, uh, to strengthen one another in our faith, to uh, be a witness to Christ's resurrection, a witness to that resurrection that's occurred in our hearts that maybe, just maybe, our, our faith will be even more, uh, be even greater. May uh, uh, 
cause us to kind of respond in a new way so that Mass is not just the same old, same old, and our faith life is not just uh, the ordinary, the, the rather um, um, uh, same thing over and over again, but rather that each and every day that we encounter him in our prayer and in our worship and, and in the ways we encounter him in one another, we will have an encounter with that resurrection, that resurrection that will give us that unfailing hope and um, help us to easily overcome uh, these, um, these things that shake our confidence in God's love. Um, for the resurrection is the sign of how much God loves us. My friends in Christ, normally we'd be blessing our Easter water and giving everybody a chance to be sprinkled with it uh, as if they were being born again anew in baptism uh, because of the fears of uh, spreading the, any kind of contagion. You know, we're not going to be blessing Easter water. We're not going to be placing water in our fonts, sadly but we'll always have holy water after that. But today, on this Easter Sunday, we're invited to renew our own baptismal vows um, by professing our faith uh, as our parents uh, once professed uh, their faith, our, faith, their, our faith on our behalf. And so I say that through this Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, we renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. I do and all his works, I do. I do. And all his empty show, I do. I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of, God, of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. I do. do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. In his Son, risen from the dead, God has opened for us the way to everlasting life. Let us now turn to the Father in our prayer. For the church, that the light of Christ burning brightly from the hearts of her children will bring hope to a world overwhelmed by a culture of death, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer that divine guidance will direct the leaders of government in aiding their peoples both here and around the world, for those who care for the sick, doctors, nurses, 
hospital and nursing home staffs, and our first responders, that therapies and cures may be quickly discovered by researchers and scientists, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For John and for Michael and Allison, who are looking forward this evening to full initiation into the mystery of Christ, and for all who would have been received into the church today, that they may touch the world as Christ has touched them and us, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who are ill or bear heavy burdens, that as well as the healing of their ills they see in what they suffer now, how they share in Christ's suffering and death, and share therefore in his resurrection. For the health and well-being of our sisters and brothers who are sick from this pandemic, Noel and Joe Malloy, Rita Schildwachter, Elvira Ferrer, Ron Hall, Sheila Caleb Bradley Finnerty, Christopher Verde, and all our brothers and sisters, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the vision of God's glory believed in by our brothers and sisters who have died may be granted to them and to us who yearn to enjoy their friendship again. For the family and friends of our parishioners who have succumbed recently, Al Schildwalker, Teresa Rose Delise, Carlos Rodriguez, Louise Ferrer, Chun Weeks, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our pray. prayer. Father, creator of unfailing light, give that same light to those who call to you. May our lips praise you, our lives proclaim your goodness, our work give you honor, and our voices celebrate you forever. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted by God, the Almighty Father. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice as your hands. For the, the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good and the good of all his holy church. church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayer of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. And by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And please, may I invite you all to pray for those you love. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of prayer, where they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating that most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the peace of 
and rest in the sleep of peace. Please now take a moment now to remember our own beloved deceased. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also your servants who do sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into your com into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the, the power, and the, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Share his peace with one another. On you stay, sweet holy spirit, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Yeah. Uh-huh.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this Paschal Sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And before this solemn blessing, which I share with the whole parish, I just wish you all a happy Easter, um, and I pray that the light of Christ may rest in your hearts in, in a special way this, this season. Um, I assure you of my prayers and the prayers of Father John and Father Bob, Deacon John and Deacon Len and Deacon Tony and Deacon Joe and all the staff and, uh, and Vincent, of course. Um, uh, know that we are with you maybe more and more now than we could ever be. Um, and so with that, again, we pray that uh, this crisis, this pandemic may be over shortly and that once again we will enjoy our, our communion together in Jesus Christ uh, and in our friendship in him. God bless. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.
So